We're more than just a place. We're the starting line for your career, your next chapter, your future. There's no limit to what you can achieve at Northwest Florida State College. Artists, champions, leaders, hometown heroes all begin here. Inspiring generations to become something greater than themselves and moving our community forward. At Northwest Florida State College, futures begin here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of College President Dr. Devin Stevenson and Athletic Director Ramsey Ross, we would like to welcome you to Northwest Florida State College to the Raider Arena for this Region 8 semifinal contest between the Gulf Coast Commodores and the Northwest Florida Raiders. And now let's meet the starters from the Commodores. Number 11, Elizabeth Gibbs. Number 12, Nia Daniel. Number 20, Cabrilla Lewis. Number 31, Ava Miller. Number 32, Layla Grant. With head coach, Kayla Petrie. Assistant coaches, Alyssa Goodwin and Jason Carpenter. And now, let's meet the Northwest Florida Raiders. Number two, Shelby Brown. Number three, Masengo Mutanda. Number five, Kennedy Kirkendall. Number 10, Shania Pintu. And number 12, Last Tier Poa. With head coach Mark Walker and assistant coaches Zach Banks, Tara Arnold and David Lowry. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two of day three of the FCSAA Region 8 State Tournament. It's the number five seed Gulf Coast State Commodores versus the number one and home floor Seated Northwest Florida Raiders coming into this contest with only one loss, and that loss was to the Chipola Indians, who just won our previous game. So the winner of this is going to meet Chipola for the state title. We're at midcourt. Here comes the jump ball. Game two of our final four matchup. Right off the bat, no time came off. It's going to be Commodore basketball. Interesting yeah. way to start the game. Off the tip, she wasn't able to just grab and go with it. Mm. Well, here we go. Cabrilla Lewis kicking it down to Miller, who comes out and finds Grant, tries to the first shot, can't get it to go, and it's rebounded by Pintu. And here come the Raiders. Obviously a tough matchup today for the Commodores. Oh, they are 0 for 3 this year against Masingo the Raiders. Matunda. Masingo Matunda knocking it down from the give and go from Pintu. And the Raiders are the first ones to get on the board. 
I think if, if somehow Daniel can duplicate what she did in the quarterfinals, the Alabama commit with 39 points. She set a new state record, 17 of 19, 17 free throws. But she's going to need some help today. Yeah, and that's not going to work right there as it's thrown away from Lewis. You know, if it gets if it gets out of hand too too quickly, we could see what we saw from the first game today and Chipola winning comfortably. Well, we obviously know what Bart Walker has been able to do for the Raiders in his sixth season. But again, Gulf Coast State College replacing a legend, Rooney Scoble, a 12-time FCSAA Coach of the Year, is no longer on the sidelines. Caleb Petrie in her first year as the head coach. You know, coming from the way of Texas. Well, she had a lot of success, 70% winning percentage. Here's last year Poa driving the lane, misses, gets a rebound, gathers it. Last year score. Poa tipping it in. First 90 seconds belong to the Raiders, 4-0. Let's see if Gulf Coast has an answer. And right now we haven't seen that ball movement like we're used to from the Raiders yet, moving the defense around. Well, if you've noticed so far, Kennedy Kuykendall is guarding Nia Daniel as tightly as guarding. she can possibly guard her. Yeah, and you know what? Just face guard denying the ball. Wow. At the buzzer, gets Elizabeth it to go. Gibbs, Gibbs with that? Liz Gibbs, yep, got the runner. But you know what? That would be, that's what I'm doing all day. If Nia Daniel is on the floor, I'm going to tightly guard her, see if she can beat me and have the rest of the team see if they can beat us. Elizabeth Gibbs, a transfer from Southern Mississippi, fourth on the team in scoring, coming into the tournament at seven points a game. Gibbs uh, stepped it up. She was the only other player in double figure for them. Double figures with 14 points. Avalon Miller with the stop on that last possession. She gets the deflection and ball goes out of bounds. Nice. Dig right there to Pintu, who just Shania found herself open. Pintu. And Eichendahl bounce passes it into the lane. Not sure why they wouldn't guard her in a stack spot, uh, position like that. Ooh. Mango slips. And Layla Grant. Layla Grant knocks down the jump shot. Here's a nice spin move from Pintu. She can't get it to go. Strong rebound by Shelby Brown. She actually went up against Pintu there to get the rebound. Great pick and roll. Shelby Brown finds herself wide Shelby open. Shelby Brown. Dahl over the top. Like the Tom Brady to Gronk. <laughs> mm. There's a missed shot from Grant, but she gathers her own rebound. Now here goes Daniel trying to get on the board for the first time. She can't get it to go. Rebounded by Mango, and up the floor come the Raiders. Now, fellas, if you notice, they have Daniels working both ends of the floor, either coming down and she has to play defense, <coughs> excuse me, defense on a Pintu, or in the last one, she had to grab Brown both active on the offensive side. Brown missed on the one opposite end, but here gathers the rebound off the missed shot for the Commodores. So being face guarded on one end of the floor and then on the other end, she has to play either either one of the good offensive players makes her work both ends. Last year, Poa found Pintu in the lane. She hit the B button and spun, but couldn't get it to fall. On the other end, there's Nia Daniel Nia knocking Daniel. down the first three, and Gulf Coast is within one here, approaching five minutes of the first quarter. She shot 10 in the quarterfinals, made four from behind the arc as part of her 39 points. Ooh. And Brown just throws it over Mango's head, and out of bounds it goes over the head of the uh, Gulf Coast bench. <clears throat> Northwest Florida State, 27 and 4 last year. Mm. Northwest caught sleeping there. Piper getting the foul. And Sarah Matthews. 
taking it in on him. You know, we talked about this in the quarterfinals. A little unfinished business for this team. They earned the number three seed in the NJCA National Tournament, but it was canceled due to COVID. They may be even better this year with only the one defeat. It's been their mission from the beginning. This to take the lead for the Commodores. And Matthews gets both to go. Sarah Matthews, a transfer from Kilgore. Second team all-conference in the Panhandle Conference. Gulf Coast won four straight titles from 2016 to 2019. Florida South, Northwest Florida State College, the defending state champions. Here's Kennedy Kuykendall putting on a nice move, but at meets Avalon Miller. We'll just go back up. <clears throat> Miller blocked the shot, pinned to recovered, and then underneath the goal, she steps on the baseline. It'll be a turnover. When Pintu got that rebound, she was covered up, and everybody else was. She had the opportunity to just turn and go right back up with it. This is somebody who the Commodores are going to have to get going. And it on the leg, the side leg of Piper. So we've got a dead ball. We've got a media timeout. We're going to take our first break as well. It's 8-9, to nine, Gulf Coast, the surprising team with the lead early on. You're watching the FCSAA Tournament and Emerald Coast TV. We're more than just a place. We're the starting line for your career, your next chapter, your future. There's no limit to what you can achieve at Northwest Florida State College. Artists, champions, leaders, hometown heroes all begin here inspiring generations to become something greater than themselves and moving our community forward. At Northwest Florida State College, futures begin here. Now coming back from the break, Gulf Coast, has a one-point lead early on here against the top-seeded Raiders on their home floor. So far, it's what's hurt the Raiders and what has hurt them kind of all year. If there was one bugaboo from what you and I have seen, Coachy, it's the turnover game. And right now, the Raiders with three already, they're going to have to bring that number down if they want to not only finish this game out, but hopefully meet Chipola in the next round. Well, we were just discussing it also. Like you said, the three early turnovers, but the problem with that is the slow start. Mm. Well, it, it didn't affect them. It did early uh, on Wednesday, but they fell behind at the end of the first period, 18-14 against Eastern Florida State. It's okay. They just turned it up. Another level. They outscored their opponent 26 to 11 in that second period. We'll see if they can get it going here. Normally they get hot after a timeout. Here's Laura Taylor. She was hot on Wednesday that kind of got them going uh, from that 18-14 drought against Eastern Florida. And right now she just gave the Raiders a one-point lead back off yeah. the bench. So how about four for four behind the arm? Mm. And that's who I was talking about earlier for Gulf Coast. Andrea, Adrian Crockwell knocking down a long three. She's their three-point shooter. They can get her, her going here in this game. That'll be another tandem to go along with Daniel. Raiders have the nation's top defense. Laura Taylor tries for a three. It, Hits the side of the backboard, and Crockwell, nice hustle to get the rebound for the Commodores. <clears throat> Down inside it goes to Avalon Miller. Miller, nice, uh, nice use of the pivot foot, and a left-hand layup to go, and gets the foul. Last tear pole gets caught up. Miller from Riverton, Utah. Senga Matunda and Shelby Brown checking back in for the Raiders. Miller didn't score in the quarterfinals, so a good start for her, for her. And this is the sixth different player to score for the Commodores 
in this opening period. Commodores go up five with that free throw. And right now, if you're the Commodores, you're liking the play of this first half, getting the number one seed <coughs> on their home floor down. But here's Shelby Brown rolling to the goal, sets and delivers, gets it down to a one possession game. Coach, we talk about the slow start, but again, I've said that we have yet to see the sharing of the ball, swinging skip passes with ball reversals. Once that gets started, it's a whole different ball game for the Lady Raiders. There's another turnover off the hands of last year Poa. She's going to come out and Enos Piper's going to come in. <clears throat> Three minutes to go in the first quarter. Eichendahl has been guarding Daniel quite heavily so far this game. And right there, it's worked out in their favor as it comes off the hands of Daniel, and it'll be the Raider ball. Here's some of that ball sharing, that ball movement you were talking about, Coach E. That weave up top. Yep, so far it's hit the five different hands. Reversed around twice. And now it's back to the top of the key with Piper. She's dancing one-on-one. -on -one. And it gets tipped out on the pass. Here comes Lewis up the floor. First points of the game for Lewis, a transfer from Florida Southwestern State College, third on the team in scoring. As Matunda goes to the, the lane and gets it deflected. Commodores Croc come down, Crockwell not able to hit the long three. She hit seven threes against Northwest Florida State earlier this year. Oh, too hard of a pass. And Piper had her, but it's just off the, the reach inside the lane there. Cornfield in the game right now, giving Kirkendall, Kirkendall a, a break. Yeah, they're going to need uh, top play from their six, seven, and eight position players for the Raiders. Nice defense there as it's deflected away. I believe Cornfield was in on that, and Gilbert comes up with the steal. Curl pass oh. into the post. Pintu creates some space, did hook a little bit, got away with it, yeah, but got away with, she got away with that hook there. <laughs> but gets two. And with Kaikendall out on the bench to get a rest, Cornfield is the one that is having to guard Daniel now. Lewis drives in, misses, rebounded by Pintu, up the floor is Cornfield. Nice dish to Mango, and Mango gets it to go off the glass. Is this the run that they're looking for? Well, this is a, definitely a great way oh, so good far. Oh, move. Mm. Wow. Chief. Elizabeth Gibbs comes in. That's that B button spin move right there, working to effect. Oh. She was a first team all conference selection. Daniels with a nice steal. Yeah, Cornfield tried to force that in there. She just made a pass like that and tried it again and didn't work this time. Daniel pulls up from the line. Nothing there. I think it was. Thought it was tipped by a Raider, but it's going to be Northwest ball. 0.8 seconds on the floor on the on the clock. Excuse me. You have to catch and shoot. Wow, she got two steps in too. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think she was able to get that with that time. But hey, 16-19, Gulf Coast State surprisingly with the lead at the end of the first quarter. Northwest did have a 
strong last minute there. So we'll see if they can continue to have that momentum. And we'll see if the Commodores can continue their strong play in the first quarter. Here's some replay of the first quarter. Crockwell knocking down a three for the Commodores and then the up and under from Avalon Miller. On the other end though, Shelby Brown working it inside. There's Lewis on a nice uh, steal for the fast break point. Pintu getting away with that hook, getting it to go off the glass. And then uh, Cornfield to Mango. And there's that B button spin move from Liz Gibbs. Great move to finish there for the Commodores. At the end of that first quarter, you got Northwest Florida State College with 16 points in the paint. Gulf Coast with eight points in the paint. Being a tie matchup right now, points off the uh, turnovers, both teams with four points. Second chance points, you have Northwest Florida with six second chance points. Shooting percentage out of that first, first quarter, 43.8% from the field for Gulf Coast, 47.1% from the field, Northwest Florida. Raiders also out rebounding the Commodores 13 to five. We'll see if that trend continues. Well, we're used to the second chance and in the paint points being the dominant factor for Northwest Florida State. One thing I noticed in that first quarter though, <clears throat> and coach, like you said, offensively, it wasn't the same ball movement and rhythm we're used to seeing from yes. the Lady Raiders. However, defensively, it's not the same because they're having to go in, some, it's not really a box and one, that's but what you would call a it. a box and one, Right, yes. but because they're having to eliminate one of their five to stay in front of Daniel, because of how high octane she can be offensively, I think it's throwing the rhythm off of their normal flow of defense because that's where they get a lot of their points is getting the steal the going in. The rotation off the help being in help position. Exactly. Yes, and when you do have to commit someone for ball denial, that will switch up your, your whole defensive scheme. So that's a, I'm sure the coaches discussed that before the game, how they wanted to handle it. Should we guard Daniel and make everybody else beat us or should we let Daniel play the, her normal game and like right now, you see Daniel Huck holding Pintu. Well, here's Mango Matunda right off the bat to start the second quarter with a nice deep three to tie the game. She was the first team all-conference selection at 14 in the quarterfinals. This is Gibbs giving it off to Labu Sis. She can't connect. Rebounded by Kuykendall and up the floor she goes. Finds Mango who just hit one. She decides not to shoot it, but instead oh. pin two down there and she just can't get it to go off the glass. A little too hard. Grant sure. fires up a three and that doesn't hit anything but air. You know, one thing we need to watch the way that Northwest Florida State plays defense can fatigue set in for the Commodores. They only have eight players on the roster. Now the good thing is seven of their eight players have already scored. So it's not just Daniel. Other players are stepping up as well. Well they're going to have to with the yeah. way Northwest is playing her. And now Daniel is out. So I want to see if Northwest goes back to their typical Help defense. defense. And, yeah. Pintu, oh, triple teamed as she tries to uh, float it off the glass. It's too hard again. A good find inside. Ooh. Mango came in and ripped it away from Avalon Miller, the smallest girl on the floor to the tallest girl on the floor. And man, uh, great physical play. Talk about help side defense. Well, she was there. <laughs> That is the help side. <clears throat> you see the replay here. Mango steps right over into the help side, but because she went through the arms on the yeah. shot, that's what the call was. But I'll live with that. Coach, has she got there a little bit sooner? Mm -hmm. Possibly could have got the charge. 
That's what I always tell our players, be on the helpline. You can't be one foot off. If anything, and this is what I'm, I'm repeating what you tell our young, guy, young players. If anything, you play a step closer to the ball. Yep, most important person on the floor is the person with the ball, right, right there, no one guarded. Pinto is down, Rhea she's Lewis. hurt. Pinto is hurt. Yeah, uh, already a rough start for Shania Pintu. Can't really find anything going on the offensive board. She does have four points, but she's missed quite a lot of normal buckets that we're used to her making. She's limping off very gingerly. You can see in the top of your screen there. She goes to the trainer to get checked out, and Shelby Brown's checking back in for her. We'll keep you updated on her. She's a very vital part the way these Raiders run things. Now we get the weave going again. <laughs> oh, my. I was just watching uh, how animated Kayla Petrie, their first-year coach, got right in front of the official. <laughs> she just knew it was in their favor. Yeah. Mm, I think could have went either way. I was going to say, yeah, pin, uh, last year Poa met there you see Liz pin, Gibbs. Pin and, yeah. Still getting worked on. 15 points, 11 boards in the quarterfinals for Pinto. So you're right. She, she's a big part. First team all-conference selection. Here's Kuykendall to last year Poa. She cannot connect. Lewis brings the ball up the floor for the Commodores. Tries to get it into Avalon Miller, but <coughs> Piper was there to deflect it out. Kuykendall cross nice skip pass. to Gilbert, short, Shoot. fires up a three and it just doesn't hit anything. Mango checking back in. If you see in the very right of your screen, right there, you saw Pintu doing some leg or knee exercises. So far, we have a nicely contested battle. It's a one-point lead for the Commodores. First three minutes of the second quarter have gone by. Matthews gets it blocked from behind, and the Shelby Brown recovered it. She was out of bounds. I know we had different players. We had sophomores that have moved on. But last year, this game went into overtime in the championship game. Northwest Florida State won at 57-55. They always say it's hard to beat a team two or three times. Northwest has beaten Gulf Coast three times, so maybe Gulf Coast thinks, hey, we're going to go give them everything we've got, and we might have a chance. And the closest matchup was 15 points, so they've dominated the three matchups. Again, guys, like we say, that was a regular season. Trip. Yep. This yep. is a whole new season. What happened then doesn't matter. Yeah, both of these teams are 1-0 and o right now. This is why we step out here on this floor. Yesterday was your day. Today may be mine. Matthews knocks down both free throws, extends the lead to three for the Commodores. Shelby Brown, yep, using that body, but can't get it to go. But just for the Raiders, from what, we've, what we're used to seeing, they're just not flowing in their game, which is exactly what you want if you're the Commodores. Miller stepping right around. Kuykendall can't get it to go, but right into the hands of Grant, and she can't get it to go. Rebounded by Brown, up the floor comes Poa. And Brown just tosses it away. Normally that's where Pintu would be playing, is at the top of the key to try and get their offense started. Laura Taylor checks in for Brown. Looks like they're wrapping up the knee for Pintu. Oh, 
trying to put some weight on it. Yeah, you can see her at the very top of your screen underneath the goal. A good D by last tier four. It is sliding her feet. We got six seconds on the shot clock. Crockwell going up against Mango, and as she dipped it off to Labusis, Enos Piper is going to pick up the foul. It will be her second, and it comes with just three seconds on the shot clock. No, they reset the shot clock. Yeah. It hurts to work so hard on defense for that long in the last three seconds to give up a foul. Yeah. Pintu's back on the bench. We'll see. Hopping around over there. I think she's coming back in. Daniel has checked in, too. She's double teamed in the corner, tries to draw baseline. Poa is on the floor. I thought she might have gotten pushed by Daniel, and instead they call a jump ball. Well, actually, they, they missed a call for Daniel when she went up with the shot. She, she got was, hit? Yeah, she got hit all on the arm. So as Poa was on the ground, she got hit, so maybe it was just one of those. Let it play. And it lands into the hands of <coughs> Gulf Coast from the jump ball. Labusis can't manage to handle it. Sarah Matthews drives. Laura Taylor's there for the defense. Kicks it out. One second on the shot clock. Gibbs or Lewis wow. throws it up. And wow. Lewis <laughs> gets it to go. Hey, you want to bring down the giant. You're going to need luck like that. She was 0 for 5 for behind the arc in the quarterfinals. And it just may be that one shot she needs to get her started with a travel being called. She leads the team in three-point percentage at 43% coming into the tournament. So, yeah, that could be something to get her going. Right now, Lady Raiders are going to have to find something to get them in their flow. As Pintu goes to the table to check back in. Here's that long get, range. That Lewis long range buzzer beater at the shot clock. Extends the Gulf Coast lead now to six. We're going to take a quick break. It's media timeout. You're watching the FCSAA Women's State Tournament on Emerald Coast TV. We're more than just a place. We're the starting line for your career, your next chapter, your future. There's no limit to what you can achieve at Northwest Florida State College. Artists, champions, leaders, hometown heroes all begin here. Inspiring generations to become something greater than themselves and moving our community forward. At Northwest Florida State College, futures begin here. Welcome back out of the break. You're not seeing the wrong score. That is correct. It's 27-21. Gulf Coast State up on the Raiders. State has, uh, or Gulf Coast, excuse me, has really managed this game well, only having four turnovers, shooting pretty decently from three. 33% behind the arc. Eight turnovers, though, for Northwest, and... Like I said, that has been a hindrance for this team. If there was one down spot, is how many times they turn the ball over. Gulf Coast also only committing two fouls. We also have yet to see the Raiders get to the free throw line. I got blinded by the ref, but the Commodore score there. That was Lewis on the, the weak side there. Taking a page out of the Raiders book, screening and rolling. Biggest lead of the night so far for the Commodores. And you see another turnover on the Raiders side. Defense, 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 defense. 
Nice dump off from Crockwell to Sis. Misses, but Sis puts it in. First bucket of the game for LeBou Sis. It's not a timeout. The officials <laughs> called something. I'm not sure what it was for. Pin two is uh, not able to continue. Is that confirmed or? She's out again. So at the moment, not able to continue. She, you can, yeah, you can still see her gingerly limping around. That's, that's going to be a big blow. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened because she was hopping around. She went back to the bench, started hopping up and down. Mm. Already down 10 on your home floor and one of your leaders goes out. Let's see what the character of the Raiders Mm. And here's another turnover. Crockwell steals it from Poa. And then the follow by Matthews is she tries to rebound and can't get it. And this foul is going to go against. Pintu still That's getting work done. It's on Miller, and yeah, you see Pintu there, the last shot. If you look right above the NJS, NJCAA banner there, you can see the leg. Laura Taylor, deep three, hits the front of the rim, can't get it to go. Brown rebounds. Skip pass to Gilbert. Back to Kaikendall. Three minutes left in the first half. 12 on the shot clock at the moment. They get it down to Brown. Brown out to Poa. And Poa ooh, rattles around the rim. Can't get it to go. Gilbert, Gilbert a strong on the hustle down there to get it. And it stays Raider ball. A couple of good looks. Just not able to get it to go down. That was the ball movement and the shot the Raiders wanted. But you're right, Mike. Just couldn't get it to fall. Is it? world around the rim. Poa can't get it to fall again as it's missed and rebounded by Daniel. Daniel tries to make a pass back behind her to Miller. Miller does gather. Matthews, a low pass. She gathers and shoots it off the rim. And now the lead has moved to 12. That's eight points for Matthews. Oh, gee, I don't think we've seen the women down this much before in a game yet this year. Kuykendall now trying to get a three. Anything offensively to get the Raiders moving. Yes, this is un very uncommon basketball for us right now. And the Lady Raiders look to be a little out of whack. Yeah, they're, they somewhat look rushed when they get the ball on the offensive end, not knowing what they want to do with it. Under two minutes to go. And if you're Gulf Coast, this is right where you want to be. Oh, man, another nice take from Layla Grant this time using the left hand, and it's gone now to 14. You see the replay here. Bustin past the help and getting it to, to go. It's 35-21, the, the uh, five seed up on the one seed. Grant coming off an ACL, ACL injury, fifth on the team in scoring. That's her fourth point. And again, we're, we're continuing to see multiple players score for the Commodores today, and I think that's why they're having all this success. Yeah, Nia Daniel, their leading scorer, three points, but everybody else on the floor right now, seven, eight, four, and four. So the other teammates for Daniel stepping up. <clears throat> yeah, in fact, Daniel has not even scored in this second period. Lewis has five in the period. Matthews has six. Also, Sis Grant with a couple of points. Miller with a point. Right now. And only five points in the period for the Raiders. Still haven't gone to the free throw line either. There's 0-0 on the 
Free throw stats for Northwest, 10 turnovers to four. Gulf Coast doing a great job of taking care of the ball, and normally that's where the Raiders get a lot of their energy from is creating points off turnovers. They haven't been able to do it today. Also only shooting 12.5% behind the arc. Normally another thing they're pretty potent about. Coach Petrie over there trying to get some air from her jacket. She's <clears throat> feeling pretty good right now. See if the Commodores can continue to dominate the number one team in the state. Poa with the spin move, and she gets it to go, and the foul's going to go on Daniel. Nice little spin move there by the freshman. Poa shoots 73.7% from the foul line. Can't get that. <laughs> Is that the jinx again, Mike? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotten pretty good at that this tournament. You're going to have to start giving the stats after <laughs> they shoot the free throw. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll see if Daniel can get on the board, too. Remember, only three points, none so far this quarter. Oh, push off. Yeah, that's a push off on Miller. That's number two on her. Now, earlier we spoke of uh, a moment in the game where there's a shift change. We spoke earlier, and now we're looking at how things have changed with the, uh, they were down 14. Got a stop, came back, get a bucket. Got another stop, let's see if we can get a bucket and bring it back down. Under a minute to go now before half. Is this that point in the, in the first half where you make the change? Yield on it to come back in the second half. Well, this time Poa drives, does get fouled, but can't make the basket. We'll see if she goes and can convert at the line. Right now, everything you're doing is trying to build on something to go into the half, come out, and continue to work at it. Fouls on LeBou Sis. Yeah, Coach, going with what you're saying, if the Raiders can just get it down to single digits, they're on their home floor. They're used to this crowd come out and have a strong second half, and they can be right back in this thing. But I do think if you're the Raiders, you go back to what has gotten you to this point, gotten you to the number one seed, go back to what you know and what you do well. Defense. We spoke earlier about how hard it is to beat a team several times. This being their fourth matchup, is this part of the problem? Like you say, the, the Raiders have gone away from the way they regularly play. Now trying something different. First half, it hasn't worked out so far. Have the Commodores found what they need to do? There's a trap in the wing. Commodores get out of it. Or is it just completely the Raiders have done this to themselves right now? Switching up their game plan. Ball gets down to Matthews. Cornfield tried to take the charge. It's a no call, but Matthews scores. Gets it back to a dozen. That's 10 for Matthews. Well, she's having off a great game. Yep. Shot clock has been turned off. There's 12 seconds left in the half. Raiders need this bucket in this possession. It's very important. They kick it out to Kuykendall. She gives it up to Cornfield. Tries the three in the corner. Can't Follows get it, but rebounds shot. her shot, and she can't get that to go. Well, they have the looks, but it's just not falling right now for the Raiders, shooting 11.1% from three and 35.5% from field goal. Two of three. They finally did get to the line with Poa there in the last minute. If you look and see Pintu, she's trying to limp across the court. Yeah, she's putting a little hustle, but it's a, a limp hustle. And we'll see what... Uh, Coach Walker and the Raiders can draw up right now. If you're Coach Petrie, you're feeling pretty good leading the number one team on their home floor at half. And you're seeing the score right. It's 37 Gulf Coast State to Northwest Florida State College's 25. We'll be back for the start of the second half in 15 minutes. 
You're watching Emerald Coast TV and the FC SAA Region 8 Tournament. We're more than just a place. We're the starting line for your career, your next chapter, your future. There's no limit to what you can achieve at Northwest Florida State College. Artists, champions, leaders, hometown heroes all begin here. Inspiring generations to become something greater than themselves and moving our community forward. At Northwest Florida State College, futures begin here.
We're more than just a place. We're the starting line for your career, your next chapter, your future. There's no limit to what you can achieve at Northwest Florida State College. Artists, champions, leaders, hometown heroes all begin here. Inspiring generations to become something greater than themselves and moving our community forward. At Northwest Florida State College, futures begin here. See some of the highlights there from the second half. I mean, sorry, from the first half. We're starting the second half, and it is 37-25. Gulf Coast Commodores up on the number one seeded Raiders. And guys, I just got word from the Northwest Florida staff. Pintu will not return today. That is a crucial blow for the Raiders. So it's next man up. I think we said that earlier in the tournament at some point. Next man up, and. We're going to see if the Raiders can do it without Pintu. Man down, man up. Northwest Florida State struggled 21.4% in that second period, 3 of 14 shooting. And the bench was big for Gulf Coast as they outscored them 15 to 4. A strong start here for the Raiders as they get a steal on the other end, head to the line. Knocks down the first one, trying to cut it now to 10. And Masenga Matunda, two for two from the line. Right now, the Lady Raiders, four for five from the free throw line for the night. Gulf Coast, six to seven. And tightly contested battle there on the foul line as well. One of the differences, though, Northwest Florida State, just one of nine behind the arc. Well, with Pintu being out, Shelby Brown is definitely going to have to step into her role. Good D by last year, Poa. We're gonna, you're probably going to see Enos Piper on the floor a lot more as well. Wow. No. <laughs> and they call a block on Matunda. First off, she reached out with the left, with the right hand to hook to get the defender out of the way. You see the replay right here. Yep, it was a, a hook. Tunda had her hands up. It's her second foul. Oh. And an unforced turnover. Right through the hands and of Matthews. They only had five in the first half. Already up to two. In the first minute of this game, of uh, this second half. Mango thought about shooting a three, instead drives it in, short corner up on two Commodores. No call and can't get the bucket. Here's Heikendall with the steal to Piper and then a tap out from Gliz Gibbs. That's why you, that pick up, that dribble to pick up, has to be very strong. You got to chin it because the defense is coming from all angles. Once you get in the paint, you got to know the defender is right there with you. If not in front of you, they're coming from the back. Mango drives in. And it looked like it just parted there for her to Nicely get it off the glass with the right hand. Lewis on the other end, stops, pops, can't get it to go. Kennedy Kuykendall rebounds it up to Mango. Shelby just kind of stops and creates a nice little screen for Mango to make it off the glass. 
How about a six there? So run by her. And that, that should that have been a foul on that one. Should have been. This is the way you want to get it started for the Raiders in the second half. Mango stepping up for the injured pin two. Who else is going to step up next? Well, I was going to say, coming out of the half, the Raiders usually come out with a lot more energy no matter how the first half went. Even if they were up, they always seem to find a way to turn up on the defense the second half. Right now, coming out, getting the stops and turning it on, getting buckets on the other end. And it leads to a 30-second timeout called by Coach Petrie and the Commodores. Well, as I noted earlier in the game, Raiders have the nation's top scoring defense, giving up 47 points a game coming into this tournament. If they're going to come back and win this game, it's, it's going to have to start on the defensive end. Start on the defensive end and then on the offensive end. They're going to get back to what they what we're used to seeing them do. A lot of sharing the ball, a lot of passing, cut and fill. Ball reverses, skip passes. Spread the floor and work the defense. Raiders have held 19 of their 21 opponents to under 65 points this season. Yeah, Kuykendall still heavily guarding Mia Daniel. At the buzzer, LaBoo Stiss Look can't up. get it to go. Mango rebounds, has Piper wide open. She'll take it in for the nice two. And you can feel the energy in the building and the momentum switching. It's been all Raiders out of the halftime. If the Lady Raiders happen to get another stop in the bucket, I do know the Commodores just called a timeout, but I'd have to run another timeout. So far, three minutes gone by. The Commodores have not scored. Coming out of the locker room, Nia Daniel tries to get it. Can't get it to go either. Rebound strongly by Brown. Oh, good job. Moving the ball around, this is what the Raiders want to do. Piper with a nice seal inside on Daniel. She's trying to direct the pass so she can get it back where she wants it inside. Way to pick the ball up. Strong move as she just gets by her man, Kennedy Kuykendall, getting it off the glass to go for the Raiders. Liz Gibbs on the other end can't get it. Brown down there by herself on the floor, scrambling for it. Hustling, fighting for it. And a timeout is called as Look at the Lady Raiders bench. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're ready to go. Very active. The Commodores got the ball and called a timeout. Just what they needed. They needed this timeout right now. Lady Raiders' momentum is picking up. They made stops, come down, get buckets. Right now, the Commodores are out of whack, not able to get what they want. You got to calm down, bring your team back together. All right now, Coach Peachy is trying to calm them down, stick to their game plan, get back to what got them up in that first half. Right now, they're trying to hold on to this two-point lead, 35-37, 6-13 left in the third quarter. Yeah, I, I put the ball in the hands of Daniel. I think she could be an instant offense for them. She only right. has three points tonight. I was going to say she, she has three points, and I, I think she only has three points because she hasn't tried to be she offensively has, she, effective. And she hasn't needed to. Uh, her teammates have stepped up and given her a lot of support. Daniel, a transfer from North Carolina, has scored over 30 points in more than uh, seven games this year. Guys, Kennedy Kuykendall over there on the side was getting more wrap on her knee. She's feeling a little discomfort. How is this going to affect their play? Oh. Yep, right there. She takes the bump. But Mango Matunda steps in to take the charge. 
gonna go against Evelyn Miller. That's number four on her. And before that timeout, or during the end of that timeout, Cornfield was trying to take the place of Kuykendall. You talked about her knee being wrapped up again, but the table said that she wasn't in on the floor before that timeout. So now she checks in, Kuykendall comes out, trying to get that knee looked at, it, like you said. Mango Matunda step, has oh. stepped up huge here in the second half. Here's Enos Piper also having a big half. And we have a tie ball game. Commodore still can't get on the board from the locker room at the halftime. This is the way the Lady Raiders want the ball game to go. Up and down. Shelby Brown getting on the floor again. Does get the ball as she come out as she comes out of the scramble. Shelby Brown had the ball. It should be a foul against the Commodores. I believe that's what it's going to be. Northwest is going to take it out of bounds. They're calling it on. Call on Daniel. Is that, I was going to say, is that on Daniel? All I saw was a two being held up, but okay. there's no two. Is it 21 or 12? I don't have a two in the book. I don't either. It says two on the scoreboard with two fouls, but I'm not sure. Anybody on your end has two fouls? Or would be two fouls with the two on it? Uh, either Lewis or Matthews. Yeah, so. They both wear 2 0 and 2 1. They're coming, They're coming to the to monitor. The, They're going to replay. Officials are going to check something out. Yes, sir. Who, who was the foul on? White two. White two? Okay, so Shelby Brown. Oh, Shelby Brown. That'll be Shelby's second foul. So, big shout out to our producer, RJ Murdoch, on top of it again for the officials. Yeah, we're, they're right here in front of us. We're trying to get you the real-time action and what the call is going to be. Right now, it's on white two, which is Shelby Brown. But it, we're watching the replay. It, she's on the ball on the ground with the with ball the in ball. her hand, like she had possession. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, what I'm seeing, at least, I'm not sure how. Unless it was an an offensive push off while they're scrambling down there, but I don't know if I've seen that called before when you have possession of the ball. Now we're still now going to get a. A third official in to check the play. Right now, ball game tied 37-37. Officials trying to get the call. Oh, and yeah. Greg. And, and Coach e, I think this favors the Commodores. This slow down the momentum. The number of players they have available. You're right. Well, they came over here and looked at something and now they're going to go to the official scores table actually midcourt first to discuss i think they're going to have to change that call i yeah i'm not sure how shelby brown gets up but a, once you made the call it's in the books it's, it's in the books now yeah but, well they have the ability to still overturn it uh we're, you're seeing the replay here now Piper gets a piece of the shot from Daniel. Everybody's going up. Brown had it initially, falls to the ground. You see the ball in between her legs there, scrambling for it. It's on Brown. Yeah, hard to tell there. Yeah, foul is too on. white. They, they still confirm it's on Brown. My only thing is maybe as they fall to the ground. Because someone is under her? Right. But it's, it would have been then a late call on the first official person to hit somebody else on the ground, which Brown was second to the ground, but 
That'd be the only explanation I could come up with. Nevertheless, it is a foul on Brown and Gulf Coast ball. And you're right, Mike, that could have been a huge yes. free timeout rest for Gulf Coast. Still looking to get their first points on the board. There it is. This can't get it, but Matthews is there to rebound and put it in. Big game for her, 12 points now, and that's their first bucket of the second half. So did that long pause steal the momentum of the Raiders? Yeah, 12-0 run for the Raiders. Poa can't get it, but it is rebounded by Mango. Mango has been the star right now coming out of the locker room. She is that firecracker right now. And here she goes again. And that's what the Raiders needed. Somebody somewhere to step up. And number three said, give it to me. Eight of her 15 here in this period. Right now, Masango Mutunda is the firecracker with the pop. And she gets called for the foul on the other end. Send Elizabeth Gibbs to the free throw line. Transfer from Southern Miss. The foul does go on Mango. Her third. Mike, you were saying earlier that this was the same matchup that went into overtime last year. Yeah. That's a tie ball game right now. If it were to end, we would be seeing extra play. Will this be a tale of two halves? Lady Raiders came out slow the first half. Right now, on fire. He had 66%, but missed them both. Oh, Good nice look. dump in. Ah, oh, but Enos Piper can't handle it. Good dump in by Brown. Normally, that's pinned to to Brown. Daniel's not able to hit tonight. Shelby stepping up in the, you're just joining us. Shania Pintu is out for the game with a knee injury, and Brown is having to step in to her role. If you look at Kuykendall, she has a different wrap on the knee now. Sis picks up her second. At this time in the season, injury plays a major part. You have to be able to take care of your body. Well, how many miles have all these players gone up and down in 20 plus games so far? You see the limp from Kuykendall Kirk right here. Yeah, she's limping, but she normally plays hurt pretty much every game. So when you say, Coach, she's always on the floor. Always on the floor in some point of the game. I think she has permanent sweat stains out here. Huh. Yeah. Well, it's blood, sweat, and tears. She leaves her skin on the floor. Yeah. Northwest, one point lead now after being down 12 at the half. You can hear this place has come alive. Get the ball out to Grant for three and she knocks it down for the Commodores and answer on the other end. Great work for the basketball that time for the open look. Cornfield finds uh -huh. Brown and Brown gets it deflected. No one touched it. Commodore's ball. To me, it was the right decision because there were two defenders on Brown when she got in there to kick it off. But I think going downhill, she just didn't have the balance to make a strong pass. And it goes out of bounds. Here comes the high screen from Labusis. Not going to use it, though, is Gibbs. Ball finally finds the hand of Daniel. She's going to try and make something happen here. Double teamed in the corner, but kicks it back out to Gibbs. To Lewis, nice ball fake to get open mm. for the three, and she knocks it down from the wing. You see the ball fake here, sends the defense shifting, which allows her to create open space. She had a season high six threes against Tallahassee. She leads the team in three point shooting at 43%. Heikendall finds Poa in the corner. Poa can't get it. Brown trying to hustle to get the loose ball and can. It's going the way of the Commodores. Right now, 251 left in this third quarter. Lady Raiders are going to have to find something. They dig deep, find something to get them right back to a level game to end this third quarter. Coming out in the fourth, make it an even match.
Matthews gets inside the lane. She's had a strong night tonight at 12 points. Now she's going to go to the line to see if she can tack on two more. Sarah averages 10.6 a game. Fourth foul mm. on Shelby Brown. Mm, that's going to hurt with Pintu already out. Piper coming in now to take her role. Yeah, that, that call where we had the break, that third foul going to Brown on the scramble for the loose ball. Still unsure of that one. But it leads Shelby to have to sit probably until the final five minutes of the game. Commodores extend their lead to six. Taylor finds Mango, and Mango knocks down another shot. 17 points now for her. Right now, she's the one putting up buckets. Somebody else, though, for the Raiders is going to have to step up and score. As Daniel first goes hard. First points of the second half for her. Mm. Only five today for the Alabama commit. It's going to have to be Piper or Poa. Or Miller behind the arc. Remember, she was four for four in the quarterfinals. Taylor. Right here. Oh, Taylor, excuse me. Yeah, it could be Laura. She's out there as well. Four on the shot clock. Mango stops, pops, kicks. Can't get it to go, though, but it is rebounded by Piper. She could have pulled that one back out as the shot clock reset. But now it's off the shoe of Poa. And I think that's what Coach Walker was telling her right there. This is where you find your rest if you're the Commodores on offense. I like the decision here of just walking it up, taking your time. You have the lead. Manage the clock. Manage the game. It's a short bench over there for the Commodores. Uh, three attempts from Grant can't go. Oh, almost a steal at midcourt, but Kennedy gets it. Finds Laura Taylor, Taylor in the corner. Outside. No. And this one off the top of the backboard. And then a foul is called. Mutunda. I think it's Kaikendal. No, you're right. It is on Mutunda. And that's her fourth. Oh, man. They're going to leave her in. She's got 17 leads all scores right now. And they're keeping her in with four fouls. I'm right now she's the only one getting buckets. OK, now they're going to take her out. Poa. Poa had just come off the floor. They only had four players. Yeah. I think the plan was to rest. Poe was Poe. coming out anyway, but yeah. has to go right back in now with Matunda having four and Shelby Brown having four. And Pintu is already out for the rest of the game. You see Pintu sitting over there with her knee being iced and her jacket on. Well, who's stepping up? Kennedy Kuykendall is running up the floor limping. Raiders are just finding themselves down here. Final minute. Eight point lead for the Commodores. Poe or Taylor, somebody's going to have to step up. That's not going to help if Poe throws it away. They got to turn around defensively. Ball was in. Clock didn't start for a couple of seconds. Cornfield tries to take the charge, but then Laura Taylor is going to get called for the block. <laughs> right now, Lady Raiders are out of whack. Yeah, you see Pintu there getting managed. That knee. Buckled it in the first half. Not sure what the status is going forward, but we do know she is out for the remainder of this game. Remember, state championship game on the line. Winner of this game will take on Chipola. And if you talk about the women's basketball in the state of Florida, it's the Panhandle Conference. As you've got one, two, and three. Still sitting around in contention. Ah. 
Commodores get it back to a 10 point lead. 36 and a half seconds left in the third quarter. Gibbs a check out. She had missed her previous two free throws, so two big free throws there. Now the Commodores go full court press. Why not? The Raiders have 13 turnovers, trying to speed it up. Almost another one here. Piper manages to get it 20 on the shot clock. Good decision by Cornfield to pull it out. Actually, Piper really was the one that pulled it out first. Get the shot you want here, because that's what you're going to need. Coach Walker trying to tell. Oh, Poa loses her man. And comes in and drops it down. Actually, Coach Walker was trying to have Piper in the spot where Poa pulled up, so that actually worked out oh. in the benefit of the Raiders. Now there's a quick foul with one second left, and it goes on last year Poa. That's her second. Raiders are going to have to do better getting back and transitioning the defense. Lewis, 80.8% from the foul line. She's got 10 today. When we need the jinx, it doesn't happen. <laughs> One second left in the third quarter. She hits both. Lewis makes both. You're going to have to catch it and shoot. Instead, it's deflected out. And that's it for the third. It's still a 10-point lead, though, for the Commodores. The Raiders find themselves down in a hole. Lots of people in foul trouble. Pintu is out for the game. What's going to happen here in the FCSAA? Region 8 tournament. We got one quarter to go. You're watching Emerald Coast TV. We're more than just a place. We're the starting line for your career, your next chapter, your future. There's no limit to what you can achieve at Northwest Florida State College. Artists, champions, leaders, hometown heroes all begin here inspiring generations to become something greater than themselves and moving our community forward. At Northwest Florida State College, futures begin here. See some of the highlights from the third quarter. The Raiders came out on a strong run out of the locker room. The Commodores evenly matching them, sending the lead to 10. 54 44. Commodores up on the number one seeded Raiders. Well, Coach, you were saying on that last play, they had to inbound the ball and just catch it and shoot, which is exactly what happened. But it wasn't the Raiders that got the ball inbound. The ball was stolen. Commodores got it and tried to step back and get up a quick three, but were not able to hit. Raiders held the Commodores to just 33% after shooting 43.8 and 46.7 in the first two periods, but Raiders only outscored by two in that third period. 36-24 points in the paint. Northwest Florida State leads, but the bench points, 18-8 in favor of the Commodores. Every player has scored today for Gulf Coast State College. And that is what you want, Mike. Everyone scoring. Oh, it's a team game. Cornfield, everybody's going to stay active. Yeah, Cornfield tried a shot here, but gets her own rebound. Kuykendall into the lane, and that rolls out. And if you guys watch Kennedy Kuykendall, every single time she puts her left foot on the floor, she winces. She's in a lot of pain. But she's trying to stay out there for her team. She knows how important this game is. And you see Brown back in the game with four fouls. Yeah, Brown. Winner go home. Yeah, you, you have to pull out everything you got. And you cannot allow that to happen. There's a three in the corner by Grant. Extends the lead now to 13. 
That's her second three. Mm. She's in double figures now with 10. Grant taking that shot all by herself. No pressure. Hornfield gets in, finds Brown in the corner. Brown gets stopped. Back out to Kennedy, five on the shot clock. Poa takes Grant, and as she goes up, she gets pulled on the arm. So she's gonna go to, to the line to shoot. Guys, we talk about that moment in time. Today, this game right now, that moment was when the official had to come and check out the uh, review. Yeah, Mike, you said it. You thought maybe that was the break Com the Commodores needed from the 12-0 run out of the locker room from the Raiders. Yeah, they were on their, their comeback. They had to come and review the foul. It's about a maybe a five minute break. It seemed like a while. Yeah, enough to slow the momentum down. That's for sure. It took away the momentum. It did. And here come the Raiders out in a full court man press. Trying to and get a trap. Jump. Yep, they tried to get a trap there and they crossed the court. Now they're back in just man to man. Cornfield is guarding Daniel because I don't think Kennedy has the ability to stay with her right now with her knee. Mobility right now is limited. Grant tried to get a three. Can't. Piper, Piper pushing it. back to Piper from Cornfield, and there's two more. That's exactly why you get a ball up early on a break. Give it up, you can get it back. Good two man game there. Yes, it was. 48 57 right now. Lady Raiders trying to find something to bring them back into this competition. And again, eight minutes, a lot of time. Yeah, they're only down three possessions. We've seen the Raiders this year score nine, ten points in two minutes, three minutes or less. So it can be done. You know, we talked about the size of the Commodores bench only dressing out eight. Well, right now it's kind of the same with the Raiders the with injuries taking the Raiders out of the injuries. Uh, Pintu's out. Kennedy is not at her top. And then Mango and Brown both have four fouls. So the bench for the Raiders have also shortened. Miller's been on the bench for quite some time for Gulf Coast State College with her four fouls. And they only have eight on their roster. But the only player in serious foul trouble other than Miller is Sis with two fouls. So they're in pretty good shape foul wise. We have Daniel with one foul on the floor right now. Matthews with one. Grant with one. And you say Sis with two. Lewis without a foul. If you were Gulf Coast State coming in right now with eight minutes left in the game and said this is where you'd be and this is how you guys would be playing, your top scorer only has seven points, but you're up. I'd take it a thousand times okay. at this point. Is with the last bit of remaining teams, I mean, there's only three, but they are technically the underdog. Yeah, if you would have told me that Northwest Florida State would have better shooting numbers, they were out rebounding Gulf Coast, and Nia Taylor had seven points in the fourth period, I would have told you the Raiders were moving on. That right now not being the case. All the numbers are the way you're saying it, but the advantage. scoreboard is what matters. Advantage right, right now, yeah. Gulf Coast. Only, only column that matters. Five seconds. Five second call as the Raiders come out in a full court press. Now with the eight minutes, is this where we have another turnaround? Write that down. We'll we'll see. <laughs> eight minute. Eight-minute mark. And I put press in, in parentheses, too, because, again, I've noted if the Raiders were going to come back and win, the defense is yeah. what was going to do it for them. Here's Nia Daniel taking a shot. Daniel's picking this time to come alive. Now, if she heats up. Yeah, watch out. Different story. She's up to nine, though. 
quietly almost to double figures. Poa takes the three. That's oh, a long two. Her foot was on the line. You see it here in the replay. Yep, she, if she would have just stepped back four inches, that would have been one more point. But it's instead of nine, cuts it down to nine now. 13 for the freshman. Right now, I like how Daniels is playing, allowing her team, oh wow, allowing Le her boost. teammates to go to work. LeBoo sis. Nice shot there, contested by Brown. But it, she gets it to go off the backboard. But again, Daniels allowing her teammates to go to work, not forcing the game, but still effective in this game. Poa again from deep. This time can't get the three to go. Brown, Brown stepped through. Yep, that was nice. Rebounded it, stepped through two defenders, and got that to go off the backboard. And that's her first point since the opening period. Mm. Yeah, you take away the 15 from Pintu because she is no longer out here on the floor. Brown having to step up in that role, and Lee Boussis again scoring in a spot where normally Pintu would be guarding. Poa. Ah, can't get it. Brown the there. Rebound. Going strong rebound and gets the foul call on round three. Commodores. Third foul on Sis. I'm not saying the season or the game here comes to a close for Northwest when I say this, but right now the freshman Matunda, the freshman Brown, uh, the, the freshman po uh, Poa, all stepping up huge right now for the sophomores that have come up with injuries. And Piper also, I mean, lots of potential here for what will be next year, but right now still trying to do everything they can to get those sophomores to that state title and back to the national game. You're watching the freshmen step up big time. Oh, Here's deep. Brown with the steal. Going all out. And they're still down 10, six minutes left in the game. Poa back at the table to check back in. Here's Cornfield, nice pass, pass. inside the Piper. Piper She's double teamed, tries to kick it out, no one's there. And it's gonna be picked up by Crockwell for the Commodores. Gibbs swings it, it was deflected. Daniel has it, she's cross court, passes it back to Crockwell. Inside, ooh, Brown got away with a push there on Miller. And she just got called for that. that oh, and then fit. she pushed her back, that's, she can't do that, she's uh, got to keep her cool. And I'm surprised the officials didn't whistle her, they're Gear just going to the talk to her. Who? Well, down on the other end, when Brown had got the uh, rebound, Sis was frustrated with her foul, and she was walking off with the ball. She swung at the ball with at Brown, so I'm believing that's why they're not going to call this tech. That's Brown's on, on her fourth foul. Yeah, apparently they had the wrong number earlier. They, they put four up, so that's a break. Wow, yeah, because last time we saw she had four. Yeah. And that was the controversial call where the refs came over on the table, too. Yes, yes, and I just said that was her fifth foul, so I'm wrong on that. That's In only four. Interesting, because that would have changed the flow of the game. Here's Kuykendall on one leg, getting it to fall. Back to nine. Raiders need to get it. They've, we've just been dancing around nine, 10, 11 points. Here's Daniel on Kuykendall. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Piper, and she loses it out of bounds. Oh, she just needed to chin it, turn, and outlet it. Kuykendall giving all she got, but uh, I think right now asking too much on that one leg. Yeah, she's coming out. Cornfield comes in. That's just tech, textbook fundamental there. Piper, you don't come back into the middle. That's where the defense is. And the defense was there as she put the ball on the floor and it trickled off of her foot out of bounds. Wow. 
Ball gets into Daniel from the baseline. Cornfield the guarding her, and but she's. That's it oh wow! They head. count the basket. I wow. wow. I don't know. That was a little late. He called the whistle when the two steps were still being taken. Mm, that's huge. Daniel scores. Cornfield is called with the push. Daniel, a state record, 17 free throws made in the quarterfinals. This is this. Shelby and Piper both go after it, but Brown comes up with a rebound. Mango was hot coming out in the third quarter. She's going to have to find the trigger again. She dances on Grant, kicks it out to Poa. Poa comes in, floater, gets it to go. Back to nine. 11. Actually, nine in the second half for Poa. You look at the demeanor of both teams. The Commodores look like they they're the ones that have won four straight games. And the Raiders are the desperate team to find a win. Very cool and calm right now as Daniel goes up wow. and knocks and it foul. down on Cornfield with the foul being called. Not giving her room to come down after the shot. Cornfield says it was her hair. I see what she means. I just saw the replay there. When Daniel came down, her hand got caught in her bun. But, you know, the hair is part of the athlete. Her hand, their body didn't hit her, but the hair got her. Just like in football, when you pull somebody down by the hair, the dreads. Still a tackle. Still a tackle. Four minutes to go. Number one seed down on their home floor, and there's a turnover. Daniel had, a, had three points in the first half. She's got 11 here in the second half. Oh. Ooh. Oh, why don't they call it the stop? There you go. Yes. Grant for the Commodores. Her ankle or her knee? She her got, knee, it kind of looked like she just stopped on the floor that the turf monster, as they call it. Here the court monster just grabbing her and stopping her momentum. She twisted her knee a little bit. I'm not sure why the ref just didn't stop it because it was the Commodore's ball. There was no break. A couple seconds ticked off there and Grant's gonna come out of the game. Raiders are in their full court press. Oh. They need to get the ball back because they need points. Here goes Lewis past the defense, twirls and tries to put it off the glass, gets the second chance point, but it won't fall. And then off of the hand of Piper. See Coach Petrie in her first season, a 70.2% winning percentage in 15 years, was a head coach for five years at South Plains in Texas. Sarah Matthews gets it in, the foul on the Raiders. Another and one opportunity oh. for the Commodores. Right now, Piper face right looking with disbelief. That's on Shelby Brown, and that's her fifth foul. She's going to foul out with seven points. Mm. You talk about Coach Petrie, this being her first year. Talk about a signature win. If they can pull oh, this yeah. one off, this would be a national upset. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you knock off the number two team in the country, and you beat a team that you hadn't beaten in three previous tries, and none of the games were close. And ironically, it would come on the day that Scooting was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. The Fallon Taylor just checked in for the uh, just fouled out uh, Shelby Brown. Right now, things going downhill for the Raiders. Yeah. Well, we've seen the pattern all tournament. It's the team that comes out slow. And has to battle their way back. Commodores had a great first half. Raiders came out not doing exactly what they've been known to do. They went to a 
a box and one type on the shooter here, Nia Daniel, to try and slow her down. And I think that really is what got the whole rhythm off of the Raiders. Rooney, I think I said Scooney. Rooney Scoball. Cornfield takes it in and gets the block call on Daniel. She'll go to the line to shoot Her now. Daniel's second foul of the night. Kuykendall uh, comes back in for Taylor. The Raiders have been down there before that basket of 16. I don't know if they've been down 16 all season. Mm. Raider ball. Yep, off the hand of Daniel. Here, Coach Petrie saying protect the slip. what you're going to see here too in this box set from the Raiders. Every time these officials have to come together, like you're saying, the, the limited bench for the Commodores, this is coming out in their favor. Gives them time to rest, catch, catch their breath. Ball's in. Ooh, that. Man, Kennedy on the ground again. Hustling to get that ball. Mango fires back and kicks the three. It rattled around, but it went in. That could be what the Raiders need. 3.05 left, 30 second timeout called by Coach Walker. That's her second. She's got 20 today. Matunda has been the firepower the Raiders have needed in this game. 12 points is the lead, though, for the Commodores with 3.05 left. Do the Raiders have enough? A 50% Kennedy Kuykendall, Pintu's out, Brown's out with fouls. Right now, 15.4% shooting behind the arc for the Lady Raiders. Gulf Coast shooting 40% behind the arc. You're going to have to find some way some way to be more efficient. When they're gonna need stops on the defensive end too. You said the last time they played Mike, the Raiders defense, and it might take you a second to find it, but they were keeping their opponents under. 60. Yeah, 19 of 21 games they had held their opponent to under 65 points in the previous meeting between these two teams, they held them to 60, 79, 60 on March 23rd. And here's the Commodores with 73 and going to try and tack on more. I love what the Commodores are doing too. No hustle to the line. <laughs> Take your time. There's no need for them to rush at all. Seven points for Gibbs today. Fourteen point deficit for the Raiders. Three minutes and one second left. Now again, before the Raiders made their run in that third quarter, they were down 14 at that time also. 
So right now they still have time to get this. Mango shoots a deep three. She thought about not shooting it, but her man fell straight down in front of her, so she gave it a shot. Strong hustle by Kuykendall to get it back. Now Kennedy in the corner, it short, but Mango's there to rebound. She's gonna go up, can't get it to fall. Piper tips it in. Oh man, that rattled around as well. What a tip in. <laughs> Piper there. The, these the basketballs, you see the replay here, just rolls around and falls. Somebody grabbed the net, too. I, I think that was Mango. She could have gotten a <laughs> goal ten there. Goal yeah. Ten. Woo. Around and down. Back to 12. I, I feel like Coach Petrie's done a pretty good job with her rotation. Only have eight players yeah. to work with. Managing the legs of her players, yeah. managing the clock. Having her team come out and run the correct sets. I actually, myself, find it easier just to coach with eight or nine players. You don't have to worry if, you know, player number 10, 11, 12, if they have to get in and get minutes or whatever. Sabu Gay in the game right now. Yeah, Raiders are having to get some depth going. Heikendall is out. I think what they're gonna try and do is keep Kennedy off of defense and use Sabu maybe for defense. They gotta get the ball back. Yeah, they're gonna have to communicate a little better defensively. A one, two, three. three. Don't leave the trap. Yep, they got three bench players out there right now. Three seconds to shoot. I don't think they know. Good defense. Yeah. I mean, it wasted 30 seconds, but you get the ball back. Yeah, but they don't. They can't afford to let them milk 30 seconds in each possession. Right. You only have 157 left. Down 12. You're going to have to apply pressure. Right now, you have to have the ball. You have to score quickly. It's just not time to sit and dance around and about 10 seconds worth of plays here. That's exactly what they're going to have to do. Yeah, they have to take it to the, the rack every time. That's going to be on Daniel, her third. So from this point on, though, you're shooting to the line every time there's a foul. and. The Raiders are going to have to use that to their advantage. Everything to the rack. And you have to hit the free throws. Why we tell players to shoot free throws, all those long hours in the gym, it's for these reasons right here. As Cole hits both of her free throws. Ten point game now. And you see offense and defense, they're switching up every time into this press. They got a trap. They cannot afford to wait those 30 seconds. Oh, Sabu. You got a rebound. You have to rebound. Yeah. She blocked it, but it fell right back into the hands of Grant and then I think it was a smart decision by the Commodores to call a timeout. Call a timeout. Save that possession. Yeah. 90 seconds to go in the ball game, and the Raiders are down 10 on their home floor in the state final four. The most points that the Raiders have given up this year, 80 points in a 106-80 win against Gulf Coast State College. More than likely they gave up. Well, we were here for that game. They gave that up because they were at 106. Yeah. <laughs> here. This has been the game that they've given up the most without the lead. They've had the lead most most of the season themselves. So, And even in their one loss, they gave up 59 points. Yeah, it was just a bad offensive shooting night for them. We were here for that game as well. <laughs> Don't stop believing. Hmm. 
Commodore's Almost inbound it to Daniel. Second. It is deflected and into the hands, deflected by Poe into the hands of Cornfield. Gay has it. Oh. She had Piper down low. Said kicks it out. Kuykendall around to Piper. Or Poa, excuse me. Poa comes up and drains the jump shot at the baseline. You got to get a stop. You have to get a stop right now. I just start fouling. I mean, right now. Yeah, you got to foul a trap. I mean, you got to. Don't foul, don't foul, don't foul, don't foul. Ten seconds. Uh, uh, one, one has ten, ten seconds. One, one called, has a timeout. She called timeout. He doesn't know that she called timeout. I don't know. I. Oof. Wish they could come to the replay oh. for that because I heard two whistles, but yes. I'm not sure which one was first. And everybody's Good wearing call. masks, so you can't tell. Let's see if they add any time. Uh, so they do give the full timeout. You see, here's the replay. Well, I'm looking at a replay. <laughs> here's the replay. The ref right in front of us is in a call for the timeout. The ref on the top of your screen. Let's see which one gets it first. There's right the, there. there's the 10 second 10 call. Seconds. Ooh, that was very close. 10 second call came first. Mm. Almost at the same time. Wow. Is that a reviewable call? Yeah. I don't think it is. I mean, at this point, I guess it doesn't matter because the timeout's been done. Man. But in a game like this where you're trying to come back, that's, that was the stop you wanted for the Raiders. Yes, that can hurt. But is that also a momentum booster? We know what we can do. Let's just get it done. They got 62 seconds to do it. Right here. Ooh. I guess that hit the, the sideline. Piper got a piece of it. And Daniels caught it out of bounds. Ball gets thrown in. Cornfield. Cornfield, good hustle. Yep, and, but that ball goes out of bounds as well. You can tell the Raiders, they're trying to do, do everything they can. Two deflections, two seconds off the clock. 60 seconds left. Daniel inbounding it. Oh, push off. Oh, that's a push off. Push that's off in five seconds. Yeah, that was a clearly a push off by Gibbs. The, there's the five second call, though, that was in play. It wasn't a foul. Could have gone either way, but that was a bang bang play, just like we just saw with the 10 second in the timeout. Now, the thing about that, had they got the call for the push off, they got free throws and the ball back. The ball was not in play. Under a minute. Poa has the ball. She drives, kicks it out but, oh. to Gilbert. Can't get it to go, but it's rebounded by Piper. Too smart. You need buckets here. Cornfield shoots a three. Guarded, can't get it. Piper over, over the, the back. back. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Live action. Yeah. Getting a little call from the sideline. The ref didn't like the call. And what I mean sideline, somebody, <laughs> I'm not going to name names, somebody in the <laughs> stairwell was chirping at the official that made that call. Hmm. This free throw comes up short. I think it just hit the net. I don't know if it hit iron at all. Yeah. Matthews just barely hitting that. Raiders need the box out on the miss, and oh. it rattles in. Getting it back to nine. Quick bucket. Here's Laura Taylor at the top of the key. Gets the three. Set up, set up, set up. You got to set up the defense. She's been quiet today. That's a big one. Get over to the sideline. The skip pass coming. Oh, and it's off of Daniel Hand. And it'll be Raider ball. It's a six-point game with 30.4 seconds. I thought I heard a whistle. I thought I did it myself. 
and it seemed like some, maybe one or two of the players stopped, but here we go. Up the floor goes Cornfield. Poa drives in. Gets the Lisa Hart. Wow. Yes! And she's going to go to the line for an and one. Mike. Woo! You said overtime, right? <laughs> Are we going to have a rerun? Let's do it. Overtime last year in the championship game. I'm all for it. This is your last five state champions going head to head. Not to discredit the first game that we had today, fellas, but yesterday, what game did I say is always the live action? The three o'clock game. Three o'clock game. <laughs> three o'clock game. We yes. had a great game for the one o'clock game also. Ah, she can't complete the play. But Piper, though, gets the rebound. Mango tries no to go. Call. Piper, another rebound, and it deflects off of her hand. Mm. It, review it. They should review it. Oh, oh, it's a quick inbound play. Daniel getting trapped, and she loses the ball. Gilbert and her oh. fighting for it. She's and up. it goes the way of the Raiders. Daniel was on the line while she had the ball. Yep. Some sort of appendage, I think it was her left foot that was touching the sideline. 12.1 seconds left, down four. What a game. You still do not need a three, though, if you're the Raiders. You just need a bucket. And take it to the rack. Yes. A three to one quick. Right here. Nice spin move by Cornfield. She kicks it out to Gilbert. Fires from the wing. Oh, it's off the side. Oh. Rebounded by Matthews. She gets out of it, throws the ball up. And the time expires, and that's it. They have a whistle? Wait. They have a whistle on the floor. There is a whistle on the floor. Game not over yet. I don't think there's going to be that much time left. But they're going to, uh, the Commodores are going to go shoot. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be about maybe <laughs> .9 or a second left on the clock. Not enough time for anything for the Raiders to do. Gulf Coast is going to win this game. However, to add insult to injury, the Raiders have to come back out for this free throw attempt. Say, what a win for oh, man. Kayla Petrie and the Commodores. Yeah, it's not even a second, it's .2 seconds. She can make miss whatever on this and that'll be it. She wanted to add to the stat column, but I the, on the, cake. the win for the Commodores and it sets up the state championship for tomorrow between these Gulf Coast Commodores and the Chipola Indians. Uh. The Raiders won the conference, but they do not get to play for the state title. Tough wow. loss for the Lady Raiders. Tough loss, great fight. Oh man, yeah, Pintu went out, Kuykendall was 50%. Shelby Brown went out early in the fourth quarter with foul trouble. But for Coach Petrie and the Commodores, great win. what a win. As she's quick to get back to the locker room, excited to celebrate with her team. Wow. As they celebrate going back to the locker room, you see them here on your screen. It was a team effort today. Daniels ending up with 18 points. She started out slow, let the game come to her. But I will say, out of all the games so far, that was the closest and the most intense game we've had in this whole tournament. So your state championship for the women's side is set. It's going to be the Gulf Coast State Commodores and the Chipola Indians. The men's final four will be tonight. Want to tell them who they have, Mike? Should have some... Uh... Some pretty good games coming up on the men's side as well as you have four teams that are either nationally ranked or receiving votes in the national rankings. We've got Indian River coming up first against Southwest Florida State. That is a two versus three matchup. And um, in the nightcap tonight, top seed Chipola ranked ninth nationally takes on Eastern Florida State College, the four seed, which is receiving votes in the NJCAA rankings. Remember, we've, we've had the games where the first half team that is losing comes out in the second half and lights it up. I'm looking at the box scores right now. Gulf Coast had the lead at half. 
but the Raiders won the third quarter 19 to 17 and the fourth quarter 28 to 24 but because of the slow start just wasn't enough in the tank for them to come back yeah like you said earlier sometimes you dig yourself a hole that's too deep to crawl out of yeah and with the injuries to their starters Pintu went out with a knee injury Kaikendall only 50 percent right and Brown going out early in the fourth quarter she played a heck of a game though to replace Pintu just wasn't enough well Mike you was talking about how everyone scored for Gulf Coast they came with 25 points off the bench Outscored of 25 to 16. Yes, well, look, look up at the scoreboard right now. Four double figures for the Gulf Coast ladies. 18, 12, 16, and 10, led by <laughs> Nia Daniel. Still. Who only had three at, at the half. Yeah. Yes. 15 points coming in the second half. So you know what they did, though? The Raiders went back to the original way they played, and they won the second half. Yes. So and like you said, had they stuck with their stuck, stick to your guns. Right. Right, and I, I get it. That's the idea. Daniel just had a 30-plus point game on Wednesday, so the idea is let's keep guard her, keep her under control, make the rest of the team try and beat us. But look, you're 19 and one, 20 and one for a reason. Just do, do, do what, what you, you do. do. Yeah, and do now what you do. I don't know if that's going to come back to bite them in the in the rear end, but they're not going to play for the state title. Does Mike? I don't know this question, but do they still get a chance for the national? They would get, I, I believe they would get a chance at an art, at large. An bid. at large bid, okay. Because they won the conference. Right. Well, that, well because they're ranked number two in the country. Yeah, in the country. They're a high seed, yeah. So this season not over yet for we'll, the Raiders. We'll try to get a clarification okay. on that for, for the championship tomorrow. But definitely, definitely a huge loss and a bad loss here after what has happened last year with COVID. Yeah. They're trying to complete what they couldn't last year. But really what they couldn't complete last year was competing for the national. They won the championship last year, so maybe, you know, it's a give and take. You got to get one to get the other, you know? I'd rather have a national <laughs> instead of a yeah. conference. Yeah, they were the, the number three seed, and then, of course, COVID ended those hopes and dreams. So they, this team, they played each other four times. Three to one is the record for Northwest. Yeah. So again, it you just goes to show you how hard it is to beat a team a third or four times yes, in a season. Yes. Absolutely. And we talked about some moments in this game. Remember, we had one moment where the refs had to come over after a 12 0 run out of the locker room. Yeah. And they came over to our monitors here to check a foul on Shelby Brown, which we still can't figure out how it was a foul because she had the ball, had the ball on the floor trying to get go after a loose ball. Turning, and, I think it was the turning point of the game. Yeah, you called that. I have to agree with you. Five minute delay, and the, you know it rested the legs for the Commodores, and then stopped the momentum. Stopped the momentum completely. So, man, just a a tough loss, but a fantastic win for Gulf Coast State Commodores and Coach Petrie. They're going to go. to those ladies. Yeah, yeah. congratulations to them. They're going to go play the Chipola Indians tomorrow at five o'clock for the state title. Wow, let's take a break. We've got 51 minutes before we have <laughs> the nightcap of the men's Final Four. So we hope you come back and join us alongside Essex Rhodes, Mike Rideout, and our producer, RJ Murdoch. I'm Blake White. We'll see you for two more tonight. You're watching the FCSAA State Tournament on Emerald Coast TV.